Hello everyone and welcome back to another Train Sim World 3 roadmap update video. This is as of the 9th of February 2023. Uh, I suppose there's not really too much on the roadmap because, well, we already know about most of it because of the Train Sim World Summit event the other day. So it'll be, I suppose, a fairly shorter roadmap than usual. We'll sort of just go over what we've already gone over before and then, well, the little updates and stuff. So um, so this is sort of a quick summary of what's coming. So we've got the Northeast Corridor, New York to Trenton, uh, the Union Pacific Heritage Collection, the Amtrak Acela. They're all coming on the 21st of February. Uh, you've got the Nidertal Barn, uh, Bad Vilbel to Stockheim uh, by TSG, uh, Linker Line to Stalker, Mans to Koblenz, uh, the Midland Main Line, Leicester Derby and Nottingham by Skyhook Games, and the Peak Forest, Ambigate to Chinley and Buxton. Um, so that's sort of what's coming. Um, and there's also going to be more news on the add ons manager, uh, Edinburgh Glasgow update, and also red light improvements. So, sort of the usual uh, bunch of uh, bits and bobs. Um, so let's have a little look. Um, <clears throat> we'll be reminding you what we've got planned in the summit section below. Uh, okay, so it's telling us about that. Uh, oh, and also, <clears throat> however, on top of all of this new shiny stuff, we haven't forgotten about some of the things we've been promising. This month, we also have positive updates for you on add-ons manager, as well as news on the HST livery designer functionality, spirit of steam spads, dispatcher improvements, and an update from Rivet on post Edinburgh Glasgow route improvements. And we also have a developer deep dive onto how our new pulse code system uh, will help with US passenger routes, including the upcoming NEC route. Uh, okay, that'll be cool. Uh, right, so Train Sim World Spring Summit announcements. And you'll see all of the new screen. You'll probably already see them going through the new shiny screenshots of all the new content. Um, so yeah, we already know about the New York to Trenton coming. So we're not going to go over that again, as it's well, we, we already know about it. Uh, the Amtrak Acela, as we've just mentioned, uh, the uh, Union Pacific Heritage Collection, uh, which gives you six full and flag liveries for the SD70 ACN six new scenarios. Um, that's pretty much that. Oh, and there's also a few screenshots which you'll see on screen now. Uh, as well as the new lighting and skies coming of the Sherman Hill update, there's also some visual improvements too. Uh, so you can see we've got slightly different um, track ballast colours there, and just a slightly as a modern touch to the route. It looks, uh, looks a bit better before, a bit more detail as well. Looking good, you should be able to see that on the screen there. Just a few sort of comparisons there between the Train Sim Mod 2 and the Train Sim Mod 3 version of the route. And I've just got the Nidertail Barn, which is on the way, um, featuring the Minty Green DBBR, oh, DBBBR628.2, uh, set in the early 1990s. So all sort of stuff we know about already. So I'll just I'll leave those screenshots running on there um, so you can have a look. But let's just get down to... Uh, there we go, Train Sim World 3 core improvements. So a progress summary on the core improvements the teams are working on. This month we have a release date for add-ons manager, good news on red light issues and spirit of steam spad. So for the add-ons manager, oh. in the immortal words of Fatboy Slim, we've come a long, long way together through the hard times and the good. Good song that. Uh, and as we can tell you, the end is in sight, finally. We're hoping to give players a date today, but a couple of final issues mean we'll come back next week with an update and hopefully a release date. Allowing players to mount the content they need to the, on the back end of their console before starting their game session, we have built a system which allows you to retain and play all of your PlayStation add-ons without worrying about the 64GB limit for add-ons, and we expect this to have a v varying positive impact on your console's performance, so less crashing pro uh, predominantly. With the most positive impact being seen by players of the 8th gen consoles with lots of add-ons installed. And there's a quick couple of notes. So we will be disabling background add-ons installation with this change. So players will need to restart their game session to see any new content that has been downloading in the background. But I mean, that's fine. Most games you do that anyway. And we are still ironing out the final build for Xbox and PC platforms. And this will release when ready. And a quick summary on the add-ons manager. This will allow PlayStation players who are currently unable to play all of their content due to a 64GB add-on limit imposed by Sony the ability to do so. So due to some behind-the-scenes wizardry, it will also likely slightly improve the experience of those who are seeing crashing on some content too. 
And then we've got the red lights and the spatula core improvement. So before Christmas, we talked about a core improvement to the parving system whereby we program our AI traffic. The team have been beavering away behind the scenes and we're in the final stages of getting this into a releasable condition. Testing is underway using our new auto testing system to check if any knock-on issues have been caused. And a good example is the One Papa 16 Didcot Parkway to London Paddington, uh, Paddington service on the Great Western Express, uh, which would see you uh, being stuck behind a 166. Uh, this is one of the services we've confirmed fixed with the improvement. And as with Save Game, we believe this core improvement will so solve a lot of the pressing issues players have been experiencing and give us the opportunity to press the reset button if you still experience issues after this improvement. And we'll investigate them on a route by route basis. And then Spirit of Steam AI SPAD improvements. We believe we have a fix uh, that solves the AI SPADs uh, ready to be released in the upcoming patch. And it will not hit the pre-American release patch, but we're hopeful it will be the one after. Okay, well that's, that's that then. And a quick note, on some areas of the roadmap we don't have a substantial update for you around this time, but wanted to provide a quick summary as to where they are in development. So here are some quick fire bullets below. So incompletable achievements, that's still under investigation. Performance improvements, so continued incremental improvements coming in patches and add-ons managers should also help those experiencing crashes with lots of add-ons installed. Derailing improvements, we believe uh, all of the core improvements to be uh, complete on derailing and further instances will be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, please submit us a support ticket or raise in the technical reports forum if you're experiencing any further random derailments. And then the Transformer 2 Preservation Crew releases, it's in a queue for an appropriate build to be released. And Peninsula Corridor improvements, the work which is required for this is UI work which has been predominantly focused on add-ons manager in recent times and work will continue on this after add-ons manager has released. Ooh, that's that stuff. Right, behind developments, this is a developer deep dive for the pulse code cab signaling system on the new Northeast Corridor route. So here we go. Not all the work we do is shiny and screenshotable. We've talked about, uh, we talked to the team about the new pulse code cab signaling system coming to the new Northeast Corridor. Prior to Harlem, cab signalling was done by uh, inf inference from upcoming uh, signal aspects and while this is mostly effective, it does cause some interesting errors. One example is where when you are approaching a diverging junction on a reduced aspect, as you pass the reduced aspect signal, you will then be seeing the clear aspect signal after it resulting in an upgrade to the clear far too early. Uh, you're still running over the reduced speed junction. In reality, these systems are quite complex and utilise pulse codes transmitted along the track that are then received through the wheels by the train that are approaching them. Starting with Harlem, we implemented a new system that was fundamentally based around these pulse codes as there's more flexibility to separate the aspect shown on a signal from the pulse code received by the train and shown to the engineer in the cab, thereby resolving examples uh, like the one above. Harlem, however, was a relatively straightforward system as it's almost entirely done via code change points and cab signals. There's really one occasional physics um, signals that they're either telling you to what the cab signaling says or stop because the junctions are wrong. So while this was a big step forward, the New York Trenton route was going to need to take it a step or ten further. On the New York to Trenton route, you've got the vastly more complex environment with trains running up to 150 miles an hour, that's going to be fun, and variable length track se uh, sections. In many signalling systems, uh, track sections and relative distances are standardised and pre predictable. But on the Northeast Corridor, you have the track sections that can be as tiny as 90 metres up to 1,200 metres in length. Um, so having a standard progression based on block simply doesn't work. Imagine running at 60 miles an hour and seeing the green, then over the next four signals, 90 metres apart, it transitions to red. You wouldn't have to, uh, you wouldn't have a hope to stop. Conversely, if you're on a 1200 metre block section, you don't need as many signal blocks to slow down in. The signalling system for the North East Corridor needs to cater for this variability, and also consider that depending on the exact path you're to, uh, to taking across junction, that variability may apply then too. Straight on might need a fewer blocks to slow you down as they are longer, but changing the road to the right might uh, 
They need a lot more due to some... Wow, this goes on and on. Uh, to further add to the complexity, there's a big mix of both physical engines and invisible code change points. It's almost like the root is a hybrid of two systems somewhat overlaid and working together. You can't treat a signal change block the same as a signal-to-signal -signal block in this environment, as the physical signal progressions need to make sense separately to what's happening in the intermediate code change blocks. Confused yet? Yeah, I'm confused. It's an immensely complex system dating back many years and designed to allow rapid transit of trains without having access to modern technology like moving block systems or those equivalent to modern ETCS and LZB and largely incomparable to anything seen elsewhere. Uh, and as a train running players along the route, it's all hidden to you. Right, special projects team updates. This is for the HST livery designer compatibility, and you've got some nice screenshots there as well. Work is nearly complete on getting this into your hands in a future update. By way of an update, we wanted to show off some of the fun one of our team has been having, James. Our screenshot and liveries king has pulled it out of the bag. So you've got some really cool screenshots there. Uh, and we can also confirm that with the release, the dreaded 0000 numbering bug will be fixed. And then other focuses. The team have also put um, put the work into upgrading both the Boston Providence and Sherman Hill lighting and skies. And they're also investigating some route introductions being incompletable as well as remaining achievements that are not behaving as intended. Uh, third party developer, so this is for the Edinburgh to Glasgow from Rivet Games. Uh, we've been working with the team at Rivet to help uh, consolidate your suggestions and as part of their work on the route we can confirm they are looking at improving the following. So for the class 385, updated brake responsiveness, increased responsive, uh, responsiveness of the combined brake, uh, power brake controller when using hotkeys, moved contact signaler function to the GSMR phone for consistency with other trains and world trains, AI to player and vice versa handover is now working correctly. Train wide doors can no longer be open while the AI is driving. Master key is now present after reloading, reloading from a save. Master key now has a turning animation as before it sort of just flipped oh, suddenly. Uh, passenger overcrowding and incorrect orientations have been resolved. External right cab door key is now accessible. All external keys now animate correctly, added camera view specifically for the TMS and removed cameras from trailers, passenger head out. And then class 3 at 5 audio fixes, running sounds updated, wind noise uh, occluded, improved general audio mix, removed chime, updated audio occlusion, fixed traction and braking issues, improved transitions for the traction motor notch volumes, implemented inverter related audio effects, updated track joint sounds and improved volumes of running and traction motor sounds. And then class 3 at 5 art changes, added caution tape to inside of guard panel door, Updated door button graphics to reflect the proper graphics. Added inner axle hubs that connect the axles to the bogey frames. Updated the first class livery and added Gaelic branding to the pantograph unit. Gameplay and infrastructure changes. Improved expected station stop timings for timetable services. Added Edinburgh Park stop on to Dunblane service. Not really sure that one wasn't in originally. Fixed routing for depot moves to and from Queen Street. Fixed signal emissives. Added missing neutral section signage and added missing uh, car stop markers to Haymarket and then route changes improved darkness of tunnels along the route added additional lighting to Edinburgh Waverley and surrounding area updated lighting at Eastfield Depot updated lighting at Queen Street Station fixed missing overhead uh, electric equipment along the route Updated a station footbridge to add missing underside panelling. Updated sign at Linlith Go station to be correct, as for some reason it said Glasgow Queen Street. Implemented one o'clock gun at Edinburgh Castle following further discussions. Uh, that's going to be quite cool to see. Um, and let's see, as a side note, the West Cornwall Steam Rail Tour add-on has been put on hold whilst River team focuses on these improvements. And uh, let's see, no further news for the Midland Main Line. And yeah, just another brief summary of what's coming. So Dovetail Games releases, you've got the Acela Express, New York Trenton, the UP Heritage Collection, Linko Line, Strecker, Mans Complaint, and Peak Forest. And then third party, Nidertail Barn, Midland Mainline, 
West Cornwall Local Steam Rail Tours and the DBBR 420. Will that actually ever be released? Uh, core features, add-ons manager, derailing improvements, red light dispatcher improvements, save game improvements, performance optimization, uh, Michelinus, uh, you've got rush hour passenger system for Brighton Mainline, will that actually ever come? And Spirit of Steam manual farming functionality. Um, and then the special projects team, uh, what are they working on? So HST livery designer functionality for both Train to Mile 2 and 3. Uh, Train to Mile 3 Boston Sprinter route upgrade and Sherman Hill route upgrade. Train to Mile 3 and 2 DBBR 187 audio improvements. Train to Mile 2, all of these are now. Uh, Cathcart Circle, Hamburg Lubeck, Reimer Austin, 2022 Bakerloo timetable. Long Island Railroad, Peninsula Corridor, Oakville Subdivision and the LGV. Uh, and that is it for uh, today's roadmap. So yeah, I suppose not too much on there, which we don't already know about, uh, because, well, we had the Train to Mold Summit for that, which I suppose in a way it was sort of this month's roadmap stream, in, in a way. Um, but yeah, what did everyone think? Do pop your thoughts in the comments below. Links can be found in the usual places, Discord, PayPal, Merch Store. Apart from that, thanks for coming in, and I hopefully will see you in the next one. See you all, and take care. Bye, guys.